Hello guys and welcome back to the shop. Since the DIY milling machine is finally in working condition, I really want to get some projects and shop improvements done with it. Because I'm still a beginner when it comes to milling, I figured we should start with something easy. A fly cutter. To be honest, I almost feel bad for making a video about this topic since there are like a thousand great videos out there already. But still, it's my approach. Let's talk about why I need a fly cutter and you might want one as well. Most fly cutters are single point cutting tools consisting of an insert style lathe tool or a cutter made of high speed steel. There also are also versions with two tool bits called fly bars or double end fly cutters that might look something like that. Anyway, they are not the topic of this video. Fly cutters as well as face mills are generally used for face milling. Though they don't have the same depth of cut or are as rigid as proper face mills, they do have their advantages. They are cheap and easy to build. They don't need a lot of horsepower to do their job and most importantly for me, they can leave a spectacular surface finish. This is a key element for my next project since I want it to look as aesthetically pleasing as possible and the reason why I built a fly cutter in the first place. Let's talk a bit about the design I chose to use. Starting from the top we can see a straight shank with 20mm in diameter. The straight shank is perfect since I mostly use my Morris Taper Free Collar Chuck on the mill. So a tool change from the fly cutter to an end mill is fairly uncomplicated. Going down a bit further we can see that the fly cutter has an angle of 10 degrees. This allows the use of insert tooling as well as high speed steel tool bits. On most insert tool holders you probably wouldn't even have to make the fly cutter at an angle. But for high speed steel you do, unless you have a special high speed steel tool holder or don't mind grinding a lot of material away. Most of the time my fly cutter will be used with insert tooling. Specifically with DCMT style inserts with a 12 by 12 mm shank. This is very convenient for me because I use the same tooling on the lathe as well. The only thing that I had to keep in mind is that I had to buy a right hand turning tool for the fly cutter. This is due to the fact that the spindle of my milling machine can only turn clockwise. If the machine would be able to turn counterclockwise as well, I would have been able to use a standard left hand turning tool. Although the fly cutter would have to be mirrored to make it work. If you want to make your own, the turning direction of your mill is probably one of the bigger design considerations. The other thing to keep in mind is placement of the tool holder or high speed steel blank on the fly cutter. Most fly cutters out there are made in a way that the cutting edge of the tool is on center line with the fly cutter. Exactly like my design. But in theory you can mill this channel in almost any orientation you want. This shouldn't affect performance all that much. It's still a single point cutting edge rotating around a center axis. What's different, at least when using high speed steel blanks, is the amount of grinding you need to do to get a nice working cutting edge. Let's quickly talk about that. As you may recognize the drawings on the left are more or less the exact same ones this old Tony used in his fly cutter build. It took me a bit to understand how to interpret them. So I figured it may help some of you as well if I also talk a bit about rake angle and why it's important for cutting. And by the way, I'm sure you know and love him already. But still I really recommend this old Tony. I mean, who else can teach someone about drill bit sharpening or a technical background of gears and still make it fun? At first, cutting tool angles. If you look at a standard lathe tool bit from the side, there are three important angles that form the cutting edge. Starting from the bottom, the first one is called relief angle. It reduces friction between the tool bit and the workpiece. The second one is called wedge angle. It sits between the flank face and the rake face. The last one is the rake angle. It sits between the rake face and the reference plane. If you got a big positive rake angle, this usually means that chips can form much easier and the surface finish may be nicer. Talking about positive. The rake angle can be positive or negative. A positive angle has the just mentioned benefits. A negative rake angle is mainly used when working with tough to cut materials. The geometry increases the strength of the cutting edge and therefore its lifespan. However, there still are some other important angles to make a cutting tool work. But that's not the topic for now. If you take a milling cutter for example, this is what the cutting geometry looks like. Here the rake angle is between the center line of the cutter and the rake face of the cutting tooth. Alright, finally we can talk about the fly cutter. As mentioned earlier, they spin around the center axis of the spindle, like an end mill, but only have one cutting edge. In the top left corner you can see the fly cutter with its tool blank, which is not ground yet. 
the cutting edge and the center of rotation are exactly in line with each other, resulting in a rake angle of 0 degrees or a neutral rake. So far so good. Chips won't form very well here, for obvious reasons as you can see on the right. If you now place the tool bit upwards, suddenly the cutting edge and the center of the fly cutter are no longer in line with each other. Or are they? Of course they are. Since the fly cutter still spins around the same center, the cutting edge is still in line with it. And now we suddenly see a negative rake angle. We don't want that for our fly cutter. Chips will have an even harder time to form here. However, if we place our tool bit downwards, we now have a positive rake angle, which is much more preferable. Anyway, this is what Tony meant with his drawings. If you use insert tooling like I do, you really don't need to worry about this, because the inserts have the whole cutting geometry already built into them. Summarized, we can say that we end up with a negative rake angle if the tool is placed upwards of the center axis. Mind you that these examples are meant for a clockwise rotation only. For a positive rake, you want to place the tool bit under the center axis. Great, this was a lot of talking. Let's head to the workshop then. At first I started with a chunk of C45 with a diameter of 60mm. After facing one side I machined the shank down to 20mm. This makes facing the second side much easier because now I can grab the part by the shank with the internal draws of my chuck and I don't have to worry about run out that much. But first I added some chamfers and also made sure that the fit for the cord is okay. The fit is alright, but the surface finish could have been nicer though. Now it's time to switch to the internal drawers. And just like that, all the lathe work for this project is finished already. Off to the DIY mill then. The first step here was to mill a new flat surface at a 10 degree angle. Since I don't have any V blocks or collet blocks just yet, I clamped the fly cutter into the vise by the shank and clamped a piece of flat steel under the workpiece to prevent it from shifting, which worked flawlessly. As the next step I started to remove the material on the side of the fly cutter where later the set screws will be placed. Next up I created a 12mm wide and deep channel where the tool holder will be placed. I'm using a 10mm end mill for that, simply because I don't own a 12mm one yet. And just like that also milling is done. The only thing left to do now is drilling and tapping the holes for the set screws. And of course the tool holder needs to be installed. Let's do some testing then. This is a piece of regular S235 construction steel. I am probably running the cutter too fast. 
That's where you can see tiny sparks coming off of it. Let's try this a bit slower. Now I'm running the fly color at around 770 rpm. There are no sparks anymore and let me tell you, the surface feels a lot better than before. I would call this first project a success and you will see a lot more of the fly color in the future. Also I am very happy with the performance of the DIY milling machine. Anyway, that's it for this video. Even though there are so many fly color videos out there, I still hope you liked my take on it. Thanks a lot for watching.